Welcome to Sparkle Storytime, helping bright minds and hearts across the globe sparkle. Thank you for being a part of the Sparkle Storytime family, promoting reading literacy globally. And I miss Sparkles. Thank you for being a part of my channel and for all the many likes and subscribers. Did you know each time you learn something new, it's like there's a sparkle that begins inside your mind, helping to build brand new and creative ideas? Are you ready to learn something new and let your mind sparkle? Let's get started. Okay, today we're going to read the book by Deborah Hopkinson, Butterflies Belong Here. Let's begin. This is a story of one idea, 30 kids in a world of butterflies. How exciting. Butterflies belong here. For Kalia, Blang, and Elliot, and in loving memory of their shiny Max D H, for Song Su So, and Miss. Spring. Last spring, we took a class picture. That's me in the back. I was a like a little like a caterpillar then. Quiet and almost invisible. I didn't like to stand out or be noticed. I know a lot about caterpillars and butterflies. That's because when I first came here, I couldn't read English. Or our librarian helped me choose books with lots of pictures. My favorite had a butterfly on the cover. Monarch butterflies are soft and gentle like my baby brother. Some monarchs make a long, long journey, just like we did. They have to be strong to fly so far. In March, monarchs head north from their overwintering grounds. Most have spent the winter in New Mexico, in Mexico during the colder months although some have stayed in Southern California. The migrating females race against time since they will only live a few more weeks. They stop in the Southern United States to lay their eggs, always on one kind of plant, milkweed. This first generation born in the early spring is the offspring of the monarchs who overwintered in Mexico. Each excessive generation travels far farther north. It will take three to four generations to reach the northern United States and Canada. During the summer, non-migrating female butterflies only live three to five weeks. But during that time, they can lay hundreds of eggs. They usually lay only one egg on each plant, so each baby caterpillar has enough food to eat. After three to five days, a tiny caterpillar chews its way out of its egg. The caterpillar is the butterfly's larval stage. It will be a caterpillar for 10 to 14 days. During this time, a caterpillar grows a lot from 2 to 6 millimeters to 1 to 2 inches, 25 to 45 millimeters. A caterpillar is an invertebrate, which means it doesn't have a backbone like we do. As it grows, its soft outer exoskeleton reaches stretches until it can't stretch anymore. And then it splits. The caterpillar sheds or molts the old exoskeleton and grows a new one. This happens not just once, but five times. Summer. When summer came, I felt sure I'd seen monarch butterflies. 
I knew what to look for. Large black and orange wings with a border of small white specks. I wanted to see them flit from flower to flower, sipping nectar. But though I looked hard in parks, fields, and the community, gardens near our apartment, I couldn't find even one. I wondered if monarch butterflies belonged to you. Sometimes I wondered if we did too. After a caterpillar had molted five times, it's ready to pupate, it looks for a safe spot. Then, if it's a butterfly caterpillar, it forms a chrysalis. If it's a moth caterpillar, it spins a cocoon. Over the next 11 to 15 days, the caterpillar transforms into an, into an adult butterfly. Groups of cells in its body, called imaginal discs, develop into the parts of a butterfly. Wings, organs, legs, and antenna. The chrysalis darkens. Next comes a closure, which means to emerge from the chrysalis as an adult butterfly. The butterfly pushes its way out through a crack near the bottom. Through a special process, the butterfly pumps fluid into its wings, which expand and take their final shape. It also presses the two parts of its proboscis together, which forms a straw that allows it to drink nectar. Adult monarchs feed on nectar from many flowering plants, such as coneflowers, butterfly bushes, sunflowers, verbena, and zinnias. Fall. When school started again in the fall, I ran to find the butterfly book. The very first time we visited the library, it was easier for me to read it now. And I found out why monarchs have become so hard to find. Monarchs need a special plant called milkweed. Female monarchs will lay their eggs only on milkweed. Not only that, when baby caterpillars break out of their eggs after three to five days, milkweed is all they eat. Milkweed and monarchs go together. But butterflies have a hard time finding milkweed now. It used to grow wild in places where houses in cities now stand. Some people think of milkweed as a useless weed, so they, they've used chemicals to keep it from growing in fields and on farmland. In other places, climate change has been causing droughts that make it difficult for milkweed to grow. Milkweed is in trouble, and so monarchs are too. I learned that in 20 years, the number of monarchs has fallen by 90%. The problem is so big and butterflies are so small. One day our librarian called me over to her desk. I know your class is working on research reports, so I brought a few new butterfly books. Maybe you'd like to be the first to check them out. Did you, did you get these just for me? I asked. In a way, she laughed, but lots of students like butterflies. I did too. This summer, I grew milkweed to make a monarch way station. I know what that is, I said. It's a special butterfly garden. That's right, she replied. It needs at least 10 plants with two different kinds of milkweed and nectar flowers for the butterflies to drink from. I pointed out the window. That looks like a nice sunny spot for a monarch way station. She smiled. It just takes one person to get things started. 
And she looked at me. I'm not that kind of person, I whispered. Hmm, my librarian said. Did you know migrating monarchs fly 3,000 miles south to Mexico to spend the winter in a, a special place they've never, ever been before? I didn't know that. Butterflies are amazing. She nodded. It's surprising what a tiny creature can do. Four or five generations of monarchs are born in summer. Most adults live from two to six weeks. If they can escape being eaten by predators, such as birds or prey mantises, the last generation of butterflies born in early fall is different. These butterflies will live eight or eight, seven or eight months long enough to fly thousands of miles to the south to overwinter in Mexico and then turn north the following spring. Their wings may be larger and stronger and they don't reproduce not yet. When the days grow shorter in autumn, these monarchs set out on their amazing migration, flying further than any other butterfly. They must stop many times to feed on the way. Winter. That winter, I imagine the butterflies high in the fir forest of Mexico, waiting out the cold to make their long journey north. I thought a lot about what it takes to get things started. I wondered if I'd ever be brave enough to speak up, take charge, and be noticed. It was hard for me to stand in front of class and share my Monarch Research poster, but my classmates loved my drawing of the Monarch Life Cycle, my picture of Milkweed, and my migration map. At the end, I told everyone, we need butterflies and butterflies need us. All over the country, people are planting milkweed and hoping to bring the monarchs back. I was surprised by what happened next. Questions flew here and there, almost as if the room had filled with butterflies. Can we help the monarchs? Do you know how to make a butterfly garden? Could this be our new class project? Slow down, everyone. Our teacher laughed and turned to me. I'm hearing lots of interest in a community action project. Do you have ideas on how we could help? I could feel everyone's eyes on me. I drew in, drew in a breath and turned my poster around. This is my plan for a Monarch Waystation. The beginning of a timeline, a list of supplies, and how much it might cost. And that's how we got started. The next weeks felt like a whirlwind. I could feel myself growing and, and changing, little by little. We formed a team and talked to the principal about what we wanted to do. After that, we presented such a good plan to the parents, they called it solid and well thought out, that they voted to give us money for supplies. To learn more about monarchs, we invited gardeners and scientists to class. We wrote letters to students in other places who were trying to help monarchs too. Our class made a presentation to the whole school at assembly time. Lots of other students signed up to help, even kindergartners. Our work took us outside school too. We went to the town council to explain the importance of milkweed and asked that it not be poisoned. 
Instead, we showed why it could be planted in every city park. Afterward, the mayor shook my hand. I hope you'll run for office someday. We need citizens like you. Our friends and family helped build a fence, design our garden, and find the best milkweed for where we live. Best of all was planting day. While monarchs don't gather in a flock like birds before they set out, observers tend to see larger groups as the insects head south, especially when they roast at night. The butterflies stop to drink nectar along the way. A group of butterflies is called a swarm, a rabble, or kaleidoscope. In winter, monarchs west of the Rocky Mountains travel to small groves of trees on the California coast. The eastern population of North America monarchs spends the winter months from October to mid-March in about a dozen mountain areas in Mexico. Although the local people know about the butterflies overwintering sites, it wasn't until the 1970s that scientists found out about them. During that time, the monarchs roost in the moist, cool canopy of trees called Olimium firs. The cool weather slows their metabolism. The moist air keeps them from drying out. They rely on their fat supplies rather than nectar. In 2008, the Monarch Butterflies Biosphere Reserve in Mexico was named a World Heritage Site, but monarchs continue to face challenges when trees in the forest are logged. Usually the butterflies head north in the second week of March. Will this be different with the challenging, changing climate? Scientists and ordinary people are working together to help find out. Citizen scientists tag butterflies and submit information on sightings to butterfly conservation organizations. Here's our new class picture. That's me in front holding the sign. Making the way station has been like a journey. And though we didn't have monarchs yet, we got a chance to see butterflies when we visited students from another school who've already been helping monarchs for two years. They told us how they serve as citizen scientists by raising caterpillars to become monarchs, carefully placing tags on their legs, then tracking their migration routes. Next year, we'll be monarch trackers too, I said. Meanwhile, my friends and I have lots to do. Even though school is out, summer will be busy. We'll take turns visiting our garden to weed and water. I'm in charge of reminding everyone I can hardly wait to see our plants grow. And of course, watch for butterflies. Once I try to hide, but a caterpillar never stays the same for long. It grows and sheds its skin one, two, three, four, five times before it forms a bright green chrysalis. Then it emerges as something new, unexpected, surprising, just like me. Author's note, the characters in Butterflies Belong Here are made up, but the story is based on a real and serious issue, the decline of monarch butterflies. Just like bees, butterflies and moths are pollinators. As these insects feed on nectar, they move pollen from one flower to another. This helps the plant make seeds for a new generation. Butterflies and caterpillars are also, also provide food for other insects, birds, and animals. I was surprised to write this story by reading about what I was inspired to write this story by reading about what children and communities 
all over our country are doing to help butterflies. I had another reason too. As an author, I travel to schools across the country and meet students who have come from many different places. I often see children reaching out to newcomers to make them feel welcome and safe. Young people all over are creating, changing, and making our world better. Thank you. Last year, I planted milkweed in my garden for the first time. I can't wait to bring more, plant more milkweed and flowering plants for monarchs together. Let's bring the monarchs back. Well, isn't that wonderful? That's just great. Here is a quick guide to making a schoolyard monarch way station on this page. Here's some miscellaneous monarch facts to read. And here you can find books for young environmental activists. And grown-up activists and educators. And here's a list of some internet resources. The end. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.